So while we're on the subject of uh, nuclear decays, and we've looked at alpha and beta decay, and so alpha was where we have an alpha particle being, being ejected out of the nucleus, and that creates a new element, a new daughter element there. And uh, then we took a look at beta decay, where we actually have a neutron which uh, decays into a proton. Now, I didn't note, I didn't uh, mention here that because uh, what actually happens to our mass number? Well, the mass number of the uh, of the parent nucleus it doesn't change because we've gone from one to one. So there's a zero change there. And what has happened though is that we have we have changed the proton number. The atomic number has gone from from has gone plus one. So we've actually increased the atomic number and we therefore become a different element. So for beta for beta minus decay, we've actually increased the atomic number by plus one and we've created a new element. So that's worth noting. I thought it would be worthwhile just taking a look at neutrinos and a little bit about them. Neutrinos which basically means a little neutron and as postulated by Wolfgang Pauli in, uh, in 1930. So neutrinos are uh, the most numerous of matter in the uh, particles in the universe. I mean versus, versus protons and neutrons, versus protons and neutrons, um, they outnumber, outnumber them hugely. I mean times like a thousand million times. So a thousand million times more uh, more prevalent. That's supposed to be an exclamation mark, by the way. And uh, where do they come from? Well, they come from a number of sources, such as uh, nuclear reactions um, from the sun. So inside the sun, we've got fusion taking place, and uh, that that bathes the Earth with with millions of of neutrinos that go through us every second uh, in fact it, so here's a, a square centimeter one square centimeter and every second 60,000 million neutrinos are zooming through that area at high speed and that's from the Sun uh, they're released by uh, radioactive nuclei, such as the one we saw in uh, the beta emission here. When you get a neutron, decays into a proton, and here it is. There's there's the neutron, sorry, neutrino. And the thing the thing is that it took 26 years before the neutrino was actually uh, actually uh, measured experimentally because it's so hard to detect. Why is it so hard to detect? Well, it's got a very small mass, very small mass, and it's also, it's not charged. So there's no charge. And so it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually interact with ma matter very much. So it's got a very weak interaction, interaction with matter with ordinary matter. In fact, the only way to, to actually uh, observe neutrinos is, well, one of the ways is that you get a big, a big uh, tank of water, which is deep underground, away from interference of the everyday surface world. And when a neutrino, well, it takes millions and millions and millions of neutrinos, but Every now and then, a neutrino will re uh, interact with a neutron or a proton in the water, and you'll you'll observe a very small flash. It's not that big, but <laughs> so we have lots of light sensors in this tank, which are constantly on the lookout for any flashes of light, and any of those flashes of light indicate that a neutrino has interacted with a neutron or a proton of the water water uh, nucleus, uh, the hydrogen or the oxygen nuclei. And so these are very difficult to detect. Um, neutrinos are fundamental. They're fundamental particles. 
that means that we don't believe they're made up of any other particles. Uh, they are actually called part of the lepton family, and you'll learn a bit more about that in another video. So that's a little bit about neutrinos and the fact that we're constantly being bathed by a neutrino uh, wash, if you like, from anything from the, uh, the sun, from nuclear reactions, and also from the Big Bang as well. The Big Bang, we're, we're uh, bathed in neutrinos about uh, every centimeters cubed. You'll find about, well, I think probably about a hundred thereabouts of neutrinos in every centimeters cubed from the Big Bang itself. So they're still rem re remaining from that time. Hope that's been of, uh, of some interest and use, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.